approved. The um, commissioner's briefing session and our comments. I'd like to just comment about the uh, wooden boat school. Uh, when you uh, got up, Mr. Lynch, I thought you were going to announce the upcoming festival by the bay that's going to be taking place in uh, Port Ludlow this summer, and it's going to be quite an exciting event. It'll take place in uh, July, and they're going to have um, a military band, helicopters. It'll sound very much like other celebrations. And they're going to have the boat school there. <coughs> the, and the wooden boat school will be there too, thank you. It'll be quite an exciting event. There'll be a lot of publicity coming up about it. The exact dates. It'll be um, starting on uh, July 29th through the weekend. So if you're looking for something to do, then it's uh, highly recommended. Yeah, the boat school is really amazing. I, I, my neighbor came to go to the wooden boat school um, probably must be 22, 23 years ago and stayed. He's from Germany. <coughs> he was a uh, skipper in the Rainbow Warrior for uh, at one point. Actually, he was a mate when the Rainbow Warrior was blown up and he happened to be in town. Um, very interesting man. Raised his family here. And I believe it's going to stay, even though it's are off the coast. So we have a, at least one, maybe more, uh, employees of the county who came here to uh, go to the Wooden Boat School and uh, stayed on. So uh, there's some truth to the idea that people come and then they stay after they've been there. And I, I think this is a, about the largest uh, enrollment they've had at least for some time, 35 getting uh, the uh, VA author or the VA uh, uh, authorization for uh, reimbursement I think has been real helpful it's a good great thing for the, for the vets yeah. you know skills that you can take anywhere too. Yeah. not necessarily I like some kids they go. <laughs> <laughs> My only sailing experience, per, yeah. well, just by myself, has been in Illinois, so oh, it can okay. happen. Okay. Uh, and hopefully we're going to reach this level soon with these uh, school for historic preservation. I think we're moving along. It's a nice article this morning. Yeah. I might have noticed. But I haven't noticed it yet. So. Yeah, for, for that school too. And they, there's. Uh, a lot of uh, historical preservation going on in the fort uh, across the water, Fort Casey and uh, Evie's Reserve. Uh, mm -hmm. There, uh, just had an article in the paper over there dismantling an old building uh, over in Skagway. <coughs> uh, local people moving all the big timbers over to uh, uh, Cookville, where people were part taking and getting them to different buildings and different groups that were restoring old buildings. Passing along, but uh, a lot of those people over there are focusing on this too, and some of those people will be going come to school over here. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Really getting grounded right now. Yeah. So, appreciate the uh, reminder of Mr. Fritz is kind of our the dangers of uh, earthquakes and subduction. And there was a meeting last week in. Um, at uh, Port Angeles, actually at the Peninsula College, a round table on emergency management, and uh, there were members of our uh, our emergency management were there, the Coast Guard, uh, Border Patrol, Sheriff's Office, um, and uh, the main purpose was so people could get to know who the other players are, to respond to all sorts of emergencies, and the uh, and uh, address the issue of how do you get the general population to uh, to be prepared to uh, recognize that you're on your own um, to 
to have uh, at least three days supply of food and water available and recognize you may need to have more. The uh, CERTS program was uh, complemented for what it does, the community uh, emergency uh, readiness teams. And uh, <clears throat> I'm glad I went. Um, got to see a lot of other, other folks. So, uh, one of the county commissioners from uh, Clallam was there, uh, Mike Chapman. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of good sharing of information. Yeah. Also, it's amazing to see that that camp. So they have these new buildings there that are really quite right. remarkable. Pretty impressive campus. Now. Yeah, it is. You been in the in the longhouse? That's where they had it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was over there with uh, oh, the NASA grant program out of the tell. And some research being done over there. Yeah. Uh, went to tour some of the science buildings a year or two ago. I have to get things back and kind of blend this together. Yeah, it's uh, really grown over the years. I remember when I first saw it, you know, back in the 1990s, last century. Yeah, yeah it was, uh, <coughs> the campus was closed for a, a vacation, so I didn't didn't have quite the vitality <clears throat> that it would have the students walking around the place, but I got an idea. I went down to Olympia uh, Friday and I met with uh, Steve Theringer and Kevin Van Der Wey. I uh, showed them the, um, the uh, asset management plan, get their input on it. Uh, and there was also a meeting of Future uh, Sound Partnership looking at uh, some uh, pretty exciting ideas on some ways that they uh, can try to preserve the sound. I noticed that the, the Steve introduced that bill. Uh, introduced that bill on the Puget Sound Core. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they'll be using some federal money to, uh, yeah. for several years to promote that. That's a good thing. Yeah, how's the budget comes out? Wait for that one today. Yeah. Schedule came out. Right. They said it was going to come out last week. Yeah. And they said it was going to come out the week before last. Okay. We shall see. Don't hold my breath. Okay. I was down last week in Shelton. <coughs> Olympic agenda, it's called. Cascade Coalition, or? No. Cascade Land Conservancy. Land Conservancy. Land Conservancy. Yeah. Thank you, Cascade Land Conservancy. And, you know, their point was that, you know, we can't just have conservation. It's got to come with economic development. And actually, their economic development part was very much like the Dan <coughs> Burton <coughs> program. You've seen Dan Burton. Of um, responsible development and walkable communities and stuff is very similar. And, uh, then I was in Olympia on Thursday for a um, legislative steering committee. Also met with Steve Derringer. <coughs> and uh, got to see Senator Hargrove for a moment. And uh, things are a little relaxed in Olympia right at the moment. As the way for the budget to you know, come out, and people actually have time to talk to you. You don't have to pull them off the floor and get 30 seconds. I actually talked to Steve for about 30 minutes. I had a good meeting with Kevin Vandeway, Representative Vandeway. So, um, talked to people about, I went down to the Heritage Caucus. Uh, that's a meeting that starts at 7 a.m. It gives me a chance to once again see what 4 a.m. looks like. Um, but anyway, I got a chance to talk to uh, um, Chris Moore from the Washington Trust about the reappropriation of the money that was uh, set aside for restoration of courthouses that we would like to do our structural work in the attic here and uh, tie this building together. And it's 
it's looking positive. The, the reappropriation is actually going to happen. It's in the, in the governor's budget to reappropriate that money. And um, it, it means $300,000 to us. And, um, you know, I talked to Chris. He, he, he thought it was positive, Chris Moore. And, uh, Steve Theringer. Everybody seemed to think it was positive this would be reappropriated, but everybody said, on the other hand, this is an unusual year, you know, so it's, but I'm, you know, it, it, overall it's something pretty positive that, that money will be reappropriated. The Senate is actually coming forward with the concept of adding a million dollars. I don't know where they intend to get that, but, you know. I walked away feeling fairly positive about getting our work done, at least part of it done, because we won't be able to, right now we have $300,000, but the work is supposed to be done by June 30th of this year. We'll never make that deadline, so we need to carry on. Um, movement afoot again about the um, Secure Rural Schools money, trying to lock it into, for a 10 year period, into the 2008 number. And in 2008, Jefferson County, received three million thirty-four thousand three hundred thirty-nine dollars Half, of course, goes to the school system. Um, it's, there's a pretty strong movement. It's hard to say whether that's going to go through or not. But, um, this, is, this would be in uh, Washington, D.C. Work in Washington, D.C., yeah. This is federal money. And um, we shall see. Well, that's certainly one area on which all of the uh, county commissioners at uh, NACO, uh, are in, uh, all of the western county commissioners are in full agreement, and I think the uh, eastern yeah, a lot of commissioners Southeast are in the states are very supportive. Yeah. So it's nice to see an area where there's uh, almost unanimity of agreement. Uh, on that, commissioners, I believe that um, while the total federal appropriation might be set at 2008 levels, the distribution to the counties, the formula, I think, would have been shifted. I could be wrong on that unless you've got uh, different information about that, commissioners. So, there is going to be some shifting. Yeah, my, my understanding is that uh, since 2008, uh, there has been a formulaic redistribution of those funds um, to uh, a wider uh, set of counties than previously received. And so while the overall pool may be set at so large, the number of counties drinking from that pool means that each each of the original counties gets a smaller share. We always appreciate uh, even hard doses of reality. 